Welcome. Hello. Hi, Peggy. Hi hey there. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Thank you. Good. Looks like a couple other people are having a little trouble with their audio. We'll see if they get connected. Hi, Teresa. Let's see. Hello. Nice. Thanks for having your cameras on. Sweet. Okay. We'll give people a few minutes to join. Um, hi, Rick. Hi. Greetings. Hello. Yep, I can hear you. You're there. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah. Safe House Arts. What's your name? <laughs> you might have to change it in the in Zoom. Sorry, I got to change up update. It's the company account. My name's Hannah Rose. <laughs> nice. Hi, Hannah Rose. Cool, cool. Sweet. This is fun. We've never done this before. So welcome to a group hangout. It kind of feels like a coaching call. Welcome. Hey. Sweet. This is lovely. Okay, so find the chat box because you're going to need it. And this is, I'm kind of treating this like a coaching call, which we have actually later today. And this is how we do it. So I thought I'd give you a little bit of a taste. So we, this is literally the first slide we have. Um, and we always have a prompt and a question. So today's question is in the chat box, what is a recent win you've had personally or professionally? So I thought of mine already. I already premeditated on this on the way to work. So let's see, mine was, um, on the chat box that was my recent win it was delightful just paid off a credit card is that what you is that what you mean off not of hand rose sweet yeah that's a biggie sweet all about that free took a bunch of clothes and books to donation today nice that always feels so good so light uh warren just started your grant writing journey and being paid to learn how to do all of this good that's how we like to roll around here yeah sweet karma yeah, it's pretty exciting <laughs> i'm excited to it's a brave new world Yes, exactly. That's exciting. So what's the circumstance exactly? Like, is it part of your job or did you get a consulting gig or what happened? Yeah, I, um, well, I worked for about two years as like a copywriter in advertisement and marketing. Okay. And then I um, kind of took a pivot from it. And I know this one woman who she's starting a new nonprofit called Idaho Women in Technology about getting more um, women and girls involved in STEM and everything. And she wanted to bring me on as my services as a writer and she's like well I want to start doing grant stuff and I've been learning about it and I've just been falling in love with it so Louis, oops I just clicked through on the wrong deck slide that's awesome cool I love it when that happens because then you're like already have a running head start so that's exciting sweet yeah serendipitous for sure very serendipitous love it yeah just had that happen to another guy that joined recently um Clarissa received an artist grant from creatives rebuild so we congrats Rick thank you um, just want a proposal. That's awesome. Peggy just read my book. If you would leave a review, I would be so grateful. <laughs> that goes a long way. You already did. Okay. Thank you. I so appreciate it. Thank sure. you. That's like a gift for me. Um, so we, well, this is good. Erica, you didn't even add anything. Erica, what is your self care? Or your win? <laughs> I'm just awing over everybody else's wins. Like these are all so exciting. Um, mine is that I am planning a vacation next week. I'm so excited. Gonna go explore Vancouver and take some time off and I'm pumped. <laughs> so yeah, so for everyone's benefit of knowing like who's Erica, Erica is our newest team member and she is actually Alex's sister, which is also awesome. Awesome. <laughs> been a professional dancer and I don't know you just completely stumbled into here I don't even know how we got you <laughs> to join us but it was so awesome so yeah oh and Hannah Rose is near Vancouver we might have to get some data you guys will need to like dm while we're in this so you can get some info. yeah give me some tips and tricks <laughs> okay well let's get going because I'm all about being timely mute yourself if you have a chance. Today what I'm thinking is as much as I originally I was like, oh, I'll just do open Q&A. We can ask whatever you have. We'll get to that. But I was thinking, I actually know most questions that are asked. So I was thinking I can run through, I'll give you a behind the scenes tour so you can actually see what things look like. And then we can ask questions, but please feel free to just like drop one in the chat if it comes up right away. The other thing we always do in our coaching calls is have a, a grounding breathing moment where we're a stretch or whatever. And so I just thought we would do that as well. So 
if you want to sit like really upright and we're going to basically, I'm thinking about the, has anyone heard of the book, Mark, Mark Neppel's book, the book of awakening. It's a daily meditation book. I'm seeing a few nods. Yeah. So today's meditation was nice. I meant to bring it so I could read it. So instead we're just going off memory, but this is what it is. And I'd like everyone to just, if you want, close your eyes and breathe in really deeply and breathe out. So the meditation today was around the idea that we hold on to our old selves or old things that don't really serve us, sort of like dead skin. And we need to allow it to shed so that our new self can grow into it. And so if you reflect on the different versions of your own journey as a human growing, you can think of moments where you were sort of bursting in your old skin and you had to shed something. You had to shed it to grow into your next version of your best self. And so I know for many people, especially when you're on the precipice of trying to decide a career move or doing something bold, it can feel like you're right at that tension point of like feeling the weight of the dead skin, but also wanting to grow into the new skin, but it means that you'll be vulnerable for a moment, right? Like it's not hardened yet. So I guess what I encourage is just to like breathe into that and recognize it's actually a very exciting time, even if it feels scary. And we all go through it multiple times. So I hope you can see the gift that's in it. And we can just like breathe in one more time and breathe out and then wiggle because we got to create some movement. (laughs) All right, nice, good wiggles, I love it. Okay, I am going to, I've got you all up on camera so I can see all your faces, but I need to move you a little bit so I can see my, the game plan. So game plan. We're going to do a quick overview of the collective versus start to funded because I know some people have questions on that. We'll talk about the most frequently asked questions and then we'll open the floor to yours. So I think most of you probably know the background story, but just a really quick version. I was a grant writer for an engineering firm for many years, worked on a lot of infrastructure projects, left, pledged to never write a grant ever again, never say never. (laughs) And then that ended up leading to uh, what I call the period of my, my three-month MBA, where I learned a lot about, you know, you can have an idea, but if there's not a clear problem, there's no business in that. And so I ended up kind of stumbling back into grant writing and teaching it in workshops or teaching it, trying to, this idea of like, I could try to teach it online. And so when COVID hit, I had actually, you know, had an online course. I'd written the first book, which you can see here. And then Alex came into my life because I couldn't manage a course and all this consulting work that we were accepting, like multiple projects coming through a week. And I just said, let's do it. And I hired a bunch of my students because I knew they were trained in the methodology and they could do it. So Alex is a project management extraordinaire. She sets culture, she's operations, she's incredible. So she took a lot of the stuff that was frankly in my head that you can get away with as a grant writer being a little bit sloppy when it's just you or one other person, you can be pretty paper-based. And she helped to really systematize the methodology. And so when you bring our two operation systems together, that is what formed the collective as you know it today. And so that brings us to where are we now? So which some people, I don't know if this is a question, you can put this in the, the chat box if you're kind of like one of the people on the fence, like should I take the grant writing from start to fund it? It's cheaper, should I start there? Or should I join the collective? And so I wanna just quickly paint a distinction and then I'll show you the difference. So the collective is a professional membership to build your career in grant writing. And think of it as four C's, curriculum, coaching, community, and certificate. Then you have grant writing from start to fund it. I guess I never even bothered to change these photos, sorry. (laughs) Um, But anyway, that's your self-taught online course. So if you are in a nonprofit, you've been tasked with grant writing, whether you want to do it or not, and you got to figure it out, that's a good fit for you. We also do group cohorts for large organizations where they want to send a bunch of people through it, and we would send them through this. Or if you're not sure you're going to like grant writing, this could be a good fit as a starting point, but it doesn't have that personalized touch. So actually, I think what I want to do, oh, we'll hit the second question, then we'll do a tour. The other question I often get is, what if I don't want to freelance? And that is completely fine, but I add an asterisk because the method that we teach shows you how to leverage freelancing to get paid experience. 
and then you can decide do you want a new do you want to have a new job do you want to advance where you're at do you decide yeah i do actually like this i'd like to freelance more but the reality is you don't have to decide that right now but if we all start with it just even considering it like a casual side hustle it's a way for you to get real experience and when you can stand on that experience it allows you to really like leapfrog ahead of other beginning positions so like here's an example from abigail so she was just offered a grant writing job. Her plan when she got started was actually to become a freelancer. Um, and then along came this part-time remote position. It fits exactly what she wants to do. And so she's gonna do that and probably still freelance on the side as well. So like you just never know like how quickly these things can start to come together and really snowball. Um, so don't put a lot of pressure on yourself to feel like you have to know exactly how it pans out. So how familiar, Please use the chat box for this so I know how detailed I need to be go, go. How familiar is everyone with sort of how we talk about the informational interview method? You can say like, yes, I'm familiar with it or no, not really. Just throw that in the chat box so I know how nerdy I need to get. Not really, Clarissa. Okay, somewhat, Alyssa. Okay. Um, not really, not really. Okay, well, I didn't actually put a ton of slides in on this. So I will do my best to make sure I'm going slow, but I don't have as many slides to teach it as I would probably have liked. So good to know. I'll be sure to add that in the future. So here's the situation that I'll, you might find yourself in if you're trying to figure out how to break into this field. And it's the ultimate chicken and egg dilemma mm -hmm. because it's like, how do you get experience without experience, right? And so this is the way that works wonders that I want you to become aware of is like an amazing tool in your toolbox. So instead of volunteering or taking an unpaid internship or floundering, do a series of informational interviews. An informational interview is having a conversation where you're not trying to get a specific outcome. You're not trying to sell yourself. You're literally just there to listen with curiosity and authenticity and really understand, do they have a need for grant writing? Do they know what grants they plan on pursuing for the next 12 months or so? And most of the time they don't. Most grants are, or most organizations are tracing grants haphazardly. They're burning out their staff. Like it's, it's usually kind of a mess. And so what you can do in that situation is then offer a funding strategy. And I'll describe what a funding strategy is in a moment, but essentially it's a roadmap. It's a document where you research all the grants available and you recommend, these are the ones I suggest you pursue over the next 12 to 18 months. And so you can then become contracted to provide a funding strategy for this organization. And it's a nice win-win for both sides because you can get your foot in the door. You can get to know them. It's not a super expensive uh, contract, right? So it's a lower barrier for them to say yes, but it also gives you a chance to get to know the organization. Um, Erica, I kind of feel like we have some background sound. Can you make sure everybody's muted? Um, just a little bit of like whispering sounding. Thanks. So then they, you get to also confirm, does this organization, do I like working with this organization? Because sometimes you'll find like they weren't responsive. That wasn't what I was expecting at all. And this allows you to deliver a deliverable in basically six to eight weeks and, um, and go from there. And what's nice is that this then becomes your launch pad for getting a larger grant writing contract. So when you recommend, here are the five grants I recommend that you feel confident they have a good chance of pursuing, you can then amend your contract and um, amend it. So new scope, new fee, new schedule, and now you can help them implement it. And it's a very nice, confident way to approach how to get funding for an organization. And you would typically charge anywhere from $900 to $2,000 plus for a funding strategy. And that is rates for beginners that have no prior experience. We charge six to eight to 10,000 per strategy. So do know that if you're feeling like 2000 makes you squeamish, it's not, it is very, very fair. That's like the high level overview. Does that make sense? You need to find my chat box, but I'm not, okay. I'm seeing some nods and you like, I'm lost. <laughs> okay, cool. That's good. So just to break it down a little bit further. So the funding strategy is presented typically in like a memo format. And so it's, um, it's this, it's where you break down, like, here's the overview. Here's what I recommend for next steps. Here are the grants I recommend pursuing um, and the schedule, et cetera. 
So it allows you to give them like here are the grants that have the highest likelihood of success and return on investment. And so you're giving an amazing deliverable. And guess what? You don't need grant writing experience and it doesn't include grants to do this. This is research and critical thinking. You have those skills already. You have them. You've got, you've got that piece covered, right? So this is the way that I think about it. So think about it like a funnel. So we make this process that can be very overwhelming where you have a quadrillion tabs open and we turn it into something that's very systematic. So I call it like a three round process. So you like round one is you're setting up your search. You're finding like 100, 200 plus grants. We typically use instrumental, but there's a lot of other grant databases. Then it's like a very quick, like in or out process, like a series of questions you ask when you see the grant proposal to decide, is this actually making it to round two where it gets more time and attention to evaluate? So those, so obviously round one's kind of quick, hot, you know, turn and burn. Round two is like, okay, we're going to get more serious and really evaluate these, start doing outreach to the funder. And then round three is like, okay, we're really finalizing this list of these are the best grants to pursue. So that's the, the process so that it's like very methodical, no matter what project you want to throw into it. And the magic in this method is that you're charging to develop a funding strategy. You're not actually having to do any grant writing yet. It works very well on the side of a full-time job because like occasionally you might have, you have like a check-in meeting, a kickoff, a checkup meeting and a wrap up. So you might need to do those during business hours. You can do it during lunch hour. Um, but it leads to grant writing work based on your recommendations. So big fan works wonders. And the reason I'm such a fan of it is that most of you are not, it's not like you're right out of college. Like you have experience, you're busy. You might have kids at home or parents that you're taking care of or whatever. So like volunteering is, is too slow and often will just never lead to a paid work and what you're trying to accomplish because of this if you've seen my bigger training, you know how I talk about this. Like this is a, there's a value mindset issue between organizations that have serious scarcity issues and don't really value a grant writer versus the ones that pay for it. And they're the people you want to work for anyway. So I'm a big fan of creating opportunities for yourself, taking radical responsibility, not waiting for it to fall on our lap. So I think many of you know, Heather, she's actually a coach now for us, but if you've seen this example, I've given it in a slide before. So her first year, she had a full-time job. She was hustling on the side. She did 28 informational interviews in year one, landed her two clients, four in the, were in the pipeline, which she's since closed. And then she had a contract position with the consulting firm. She made her 15K in her first year, felt really good about her client load. So she ended up quitting her full-time job. She started her family. Her baby dot is adorable. And she now can do that full-time from home. And when she started, this was literally like the first, I, her first thing she said on her day one, which is like, I think I can learn how to write grants. That doesn't bother me, but I'm worried that I won't be able to land clients or that I fear that maybe I won't understand the business side of freelancing and consulting. Like, obviously she figured it out. So all those fears are legitimate and we all feel them. Like it's a common experience. But like you can see that she and many others just like can really rock it through those. So how does the collective work, I thought we could go do a tour. So it's, let's go do that. I think right now I have my screen. Oops, I'm clicking too many buttons. I think I'm just gonna go show it to you. Oops, too many slides. Okay, screen share. So here we are, can everyone see this? So this is the actual course content. We use a platform called Kajabi. So when you join, I'd want you to binge phase zero because this is going to onboard you, give you expectations, how to get organized. Here's all the templates for the entire course. They're here. Um, so you would basically like click open the video. You can watch it. And then there's description below. Phase one is about getting paid to learn. So this is where we talk about the informational interview method in way more detail. Um, talk about how do you actually contract a funding strategy. There's the template for doing so. Uh, etc. and mastering some of the mindset issues that we tend to see come up. Phase two then is about finding the best grants. So this is how do you produce a funding strategy. So you'll get an overview of all the main tools that go into this toolbox. Project planning toolkit, power prospectus, all of these things will be second nature to you soon. Uh, here's those three different stages I was talking about. How to develop one, how to contract it, project management is huge. And then if you actually open up into the next series of videos, 
you will upload a funding strategy. We want you to do a real one and a coach will review your work and give it a pass or fail. Now, if you fail, it's okay. It's fine. It just means that like we're holding you to a high standard. You can go redo it and you re resubmit it, but almost everybody passes. So it's a way for you to get that personalized touch on like, am I actually getting the content? There's also a test um, in phase two. Make sure you're understanding it. This is phase three. So this is all about like, the seven steps to writing a grant. If you've seen my free course, we have a kind of a higher level overview of this. So this is the same thing where there's project management training in here. You'll take an assessment and then boom, how you earn your certificate is completing phase zero through three, submitting phase the funding strategy and grant writing test, the assessments, and then submitting a funding strategy. And so when all those things are completed, once a month, we go in and we check on that, and then we can send you out a certificate. Phase four is for getting more grant writing experience. So talking about what it takes basically to gain that experience to having about 15K in revenue. Um, and then that leads us to phase five where it's like, okay, now you can choose your DIY adventure if you don't even choose it earlier, where it's like, okay, now how do we scale you to 50K? This is talking about everything from bookkeeping and payroll and turbo marketing engine and how, literally how to set up a business in three days, um, teaming, et cetera. When you hit 35K in revenue, you can submit your financial statements and that'll unlock, giving you access to phase six, which we just rolled out. Phase six is for people that are building their business to six figures, whether that's breaking the 100K mark or you know up to 250K a year. So this is like my favorite section. I poured a lot of heart and soul into this. So it's about how to make decisions, how to do annual strategic planning whole bunch of money stuff. How much are you charging? How's your cash flow? How do you read financial statements? How the heck do you hire people? Like all these things aren't really things you're probably needing to worry about right now at all, because this is a question for later. Um, but that's how you would unlock that. For everyone else that wants to land a grant writing job, and I would say the split is about 50-50. About 50 end up wanting to full on build their own practice and work with others. And the other 50 want to land a job or grow in their job or get their own nonprofit funded. And so that is happening here. So you know, job search tools, putting together a killer resume, et cetera. And then here are grant writing tools for everyone's benefit, um, like evaluation and logic models, dealing with sticky situations, that sort of a thing. So that's what it looks like behind the scenes. I showed you phase six. Um, then let's see, I think here. So coaching calls are recorded there. Then in each coaching call we have, we'll timestamp the video. So that if you have a question, you can come up you, and you can't attend the coaching call, you can come down to it and be like, oh, I'm Philip, my mind's, you know, my prospect is tear down happened at 1818. You can scrub through and watch it. I just had someone who watched all 41 coaching call videos. <laughs> we got to mail her something, Erica. It's so impressive. She learned a ton because there's a lot of value in listening to these old replays. Uh, then there's the bonus training section. So this is where it's like, if I don't, if we're seeing a topic come up a lot and I don't have that expertise, we go and find someone that can teach it. So fundraising is different than grant writing. We have um, a partner that teaches that. Nonprofit Jenny is amazing, working with startup nonprofits, resume writing. I mean, way deeper on informational interviews. A lot of people have questions on that. So we have a ton of audits here where you can see like I did an informational interview and then I tear it down so you can study it, that kind of a thing. Um, so lots in there. Let's see. Um, pen to polish. It's a separate, it's an add-on, but it's a writing course. A lot of people were not feeling super confident about writing and I don't blame them. I also didn't really feel it. I feel like a self-taught hack job and it, I learned a ton in this course and we actually had a professional writing coach put this together. So I think that's that. Um, I'm seeing chat things. I might be missing things. Um, are we handling this? Okay. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Okay, sweet. and then this is grant writing from start to funded. So we went from having what, 68, I think there's 68 videos in here, 63, then start to funded is 38. So it is, it's less content and it's really, there's nothing about how to build a business, how to land a job, none of that. It is just around like the fundamentals of grant writing, right? So a lot of similar content, right? Like the project planning toolkit, et cetera, like it's here, same stuff grant writing, but just nothing that would have to do with the career portion. It's really about just giving you the tools to do grant writing. 
So that's the difference. You can ask questions in the comments below a course video, and that's how you, you know, you can get an answer, but it doesn't include like coaching or community or any such thing like that. Um, so I hope has that throw in the chat box if that was helpful to see under the hood, if there was any other kind of questions that came up from that. So like, yeah, yeah, it was helpful. Cool. Good, good, good. Karma and Clarissa and Peggy, Paula. Very good to see the layout of both programs. Good. Yeah, I think so too. I know how nice it is. Um, I feel the same way when I want to buy into a course. I'm like, I just want to see what it's like. So biggest piece is just that certification is only with the collective because the certification is not like auto-generated. There's a real coach with real time that we're paying for to like look through your work. People are posting questions in the community group and getting support. So the other big piece of that, and I'll bring this up later, is that we are actually referring people. Uh, a lot of people are coming to us trying to find a grant writer. And so if I'm going to refer someone from the collective, I want to be very confident uh, that they're stellar at it. So that's a big piece of it too. Um, so incentives. So when you hit different milestones, we mail you swag. So 50,000, when you make 50K in revenue or you've landed a new job, we'll send you a homemade, handmade mug by a potter. Oh, dang, it doesn't show. And when you hit 100K, um, you get a really cool unicorn hoodie. Uh, Hannah Rose just asked a good question. If you complete start defunded, yeah, and decide to move forward, is there a proration or discount? Yeah, exactly. So basically we'll just subtract that from the price. So if you decide to join, we take 750 off and then you can, so it's all a wash financially for you. Um, so yeah, coaching, basically these calls happen every two weeks. You submit your questions 24 hours in advance. That gives me time to prepare and our other coaches. And then we have those calls uh, where we go through them in order. So if you can't make the call, you can catch the replay. But we do have a ton of people that just come to calls that don't um, ever ask a question, but they just learn so much by being in the presence of those. They're pretty magical. We deal with, I mean, you name it. You want your narrative looked over, we'll do it. You want to talk about something you're struggling with, we'll go there. You want to talk about if you're charging enough, I will get you to charge more. <laughs> like, <laughs> what I'm kind of known for. <laughs> I wish we had a way to quantify like how much more money I've helped people make just by like coaching them through charging more. But I feel like that's a bigger accomplishment than anything else. <laughs> um, so the community, our community is on a platform called Circles. So I don't know if anyone's used that, but it's sort of like if Slack and the good things about Facebook made a baby, it's Circle, it's a gajillion times better. So every question is answered within 36 hours. We have six coaches, including myself and Alex that are providing advice. And there are very specific channels for where you are in your journey. So you don't get overwhelmed. Here's a zoomed in shot. I can't take you to go show that just because it has like, people's names. But you can see on the left-hand side, that's where there's kind of all these different channels, right? Like you'd start by introducing yourself, you know, share a win. Events is how you'd learn about the coaching calls. Opportunities is where we post uh, opportunities for people looking for a grant writer, um, which is sweet. So we get several of those a week. Then there's, you know, the informational interview method, funding strategy, grant writing, like all of that breaks down there. So that's what the community looks like. We love it. So here's just a couple examples. I took some screenshots yesterday. Um, these are just literally just a, like a sampling of wins from the last week, let alone the last year and a half or however long we've had the collective up. So Juan here was, uh, had a family, young family, he was doing agriculture and just wasn't making ends meet. And so he just made his 50, joined the 50K club, made 50K. Um, what I love about it, he says, I'm the only employee and expenses are next to nothing. Running a business has never felt so awesome. Um, so now he's uh, hungry for hitting the 100K goal. He about spat his morning orange juice onto his computer when he realized what he's going to owe in taxes this year, which is a great problem to have. And he's keeping his mug away from his six-year-old daughter who wants to have it. So um, here's Amani. So this one's cool. A lot of times I get asked like, isn't this saturated? Like, are there really enough demand for grant writers? And this really helps show that yes, there's still a lot of demand. So she decided to put herself out there and search for a new job. And she has been swamped with grant writing job interviews. So she had three grant writing interviews in the end of July, three this month and three more happening this week. And two are already in the final stage. And she read my favorite book that we, we really encourage you to read if you haven't. I don't know if anyone has. Has anyone read We Should All Be Millionaires by... Um, Rachel Rogers, if you haven't, we so recommend it. It's so good. 
but I just love what she said that she said, I'm fired up. I'm ready to ask for the salary I want because I believe in the value I can deliver and have the proof to back it up. Imposter syndrome is sneaking in, but I'm proving to my inner critic, I'm more than competent and I can dream bigger and see it happen. And then she did a couple informational interviews with a couple of unicorns in the program. And it was just like really pumped her up. So this is like a very typical post that you'd see in the community group. Or here's Jess. So Jess is also, she did 50K, 55K in her first year. Now she's crushing it. So she's hiring a bunch of unicorns. So she put a call out for people to help subcontract under her because she's really good at business development. I've actually handed her a few of my projects and we stopped consulting and she's made 1.1 million in grants. This is all in literally a little over a year. She was a former teacher, had no grant writing experience at all. So it's just incredible how quickly things can happen once you start putting your mind to it. Um, Summer, Summer had all sorts of imposter syndrome to come over and she did it. She got her first project funded. She won her first grant. Like it just, it's so beautiful. Um, Rachel needed the salary negotiation lesson real quick so that she can answer what her demands would be for a position they're literally creating for her. Oh, it's three days ago. And Tom, he had a goal. We have a success story about him on the website, but his goal is to hit 10K in one month. He did it. And now his next goal is to hit 10K for three months in a row. So like, just, it's just sweet. It makes me happy. If I have a bad day, I just got to go check out the wins. Uh, so we already talked about trainings. Those get added to about a quarter, every quarter. This is not something that like we organized. This was entirely unicorn led, um, but it's now in its second year of book club. And it's lovely. Um, we just, I just read the book for this month and it was like tapping into your inner unicorn and about, it was about finding your inner creativity. So that's a really fun and intimate place. Those aren't recorded. It's just where unicorns connect with each other. Referring work. So this is an interesting experiment we did. We just created a page called learngrantwriting.org slash hire a grant writer just to see what would happen, put a few of our grant writers on the page. And it is now the number one ranked uh, website when you Google hire a grant writer above Upwork, above grantwriterteams.com, like you name it. So that's bringing us in a ton of people looking for grant writers, which we're pre-vetting to make sure they're paying and not expecting it for free. Erica runs that. Um, and this is definitely an area I see us like strengthening and developing more next year because it's a big opportunity. I went to go try to buy hireagrantwriter.com. Erica, you don't even know this, but someone owns the domain and they're trying to charge me like $5,000 to buy it back. And I'm just like, ah, I know I don't want to <laughs> do that. You know? So trying to get that domain, it's all kind of still, you know, pipe dream for us, but it's clearly a demand and something that we're trying to do for those of our um, unicorns that hit 15K in revenue. We're also experiencing doing our first retreat in mastermind and gatherings. So Alex and I travel a fair bit. So sometimes when we're in a city, like Alex was in Seattle and Denver in April and May. And so she organized some meetups. That was really fun for unicorns that are in the area. Many people do meet up on their own, but this is our first formal retreat. It's happening in Sedona. It's September 29th to October 2nd this year. Have to be a member of the collective to go. If you are interested in going to this, I know it's a lot to join the collective and pay for a retreat. So you can definitely email us info at Sunworks and we could talk about how we can give you a discount for the retreat because there's four spots left. It'll be fun. So the collective is a, a lot to take in, but I want you to know like the experience is very carefully curated so that you're not overwhelmed, that you have success, you have the support you need. But again, just go back to curriculum, coaching, community certificate. What's another word for like C, celebration? <laughs> That's what it should be. <laughs> and then yeah, to answer Hannah Rose's question earlier, if you decide you do wanna go grant writing from start to funded first and then join us, that's fine. Um, we would then you know, take that off of your membership and it's, so it's all financially washed to you. But if you're on the fence at all, I really do encourage you to join the collective instead. That's where we're pouring our heart and soul. That's where you're getting the personalized support. The community is amazing. And I think that's what makes all the difference in the success that you have. Okay, so that's that piece. Let's get into some of the questions. Um, has anyone wondered this? What is the time commitment? So if you can put forth five hours a week for 90 days, you can get certified in that window. We actually have um, a very specific like checklist of what to do every week to hit that cadence. 
So obviously the more time that you can put in, the better, like the more you put into anything, the more you get out of it. We all know that, but I also know that you're very busy. You're a full-time professional, right? And so it's not like blithering videos. Like I scripted what we say. It's very concise and to the point. So very doable. Another question I get a lot of times when I have one-on-one -on -one calls is how quickly do people experience success? And so I grabbed this screen grab screenshot as well from Asia. Uh, Asia. And so it was, wow, I was not expecting my second go at an informational interview to end with a request for a funding st strategy proposal already. And then she had some questions. So it can happen very quickly. Here's what I've learned. Okay, if you think about an arch, um, like an archway, the keystone is the rock that's at the very top that holds the arch together. So the keystone for your success comes down to one activity, the quantity of informational interviews that you do. And so the rate at which people succeed depends on the number of interviews they do and how seriously they take their own personal development to doing those interviews. Um, so if you're already, you know, someone that feels very comfortable with just having a one-on-one -on -one call with someone, that might go easier and smoother for you than someone that maybe has a lot of nerves that they have to work through and maybe not believing in themselves or thinking they're worthy of getting a, doing a funding strategy for someone that might take them a little bit longer, but all stuff that we support you through. Kim, I grabbed this screen grab because I really appreciate what she did. She literally would go back, listen to her recording of the conversation, study it, right? Understand, see the moment like, okay, that my client's body language, I was reading that, right? Et cetera. And so she was, and then she was just like really doing a teardown so that she could learn and do better. And there you go. Like she literally already received a request to prepare a funding strategy and give it to the board. I guess that would have been yesterday. So we should follow up and see how it went. But um, so that's like the biggest piece I just want to emphasize of like who wildly succeeds versus those that maybe struggle a little bit more. It's, it's jumping right in and doing those informational interviews and getting out of often our own way. There's another screen grab. Some of you might've seen this, but we get asked a lot more of like success data. So 85% of people that join the collective make back their investment within four to six months. It takes most people 90, so the average is 97 days to earning your certificate. Keep in mind that is with a real project because you're having to submit a funding strategy with a real project. Um, and then 21% are earning 15K in their first year. Keep in mind, like they're doing this on top of a full-time job, maybe having kids at home. Like this is like, that's a pretty big deal from someone that might have no grant writing experience and no business experience. And then after one year, we have a split. 23% are freelancing full-time, 23% are working at a full-time job, which they got by doing this program, 30% side hustling, 24% decided to volunteer, or they decide they don't like grant writing, they want to do something else, whatever. So that's like, a, that's pretty much how that breaks down. So hopefully those date stats are helpful. I feel like I'm talking a lot. Are we doing on so far these, are these questions hitting things that you've been wanting to, to know about? Because that would be that would be good for hitting those. Um, one thing I get often too is how will I know if I'm good at this? So I can identify a grant writing unicorn from a mile away. And the fact that you already made it here probably means like it's a really good chance that you are going to be good at this. But if you have any reservations about that, you can ask. But the biggest themes would be if you don't like every day to be the same, you generally enjoy writing. You don't even have to love writing. Turns out I don't even love writing. It's kind of a chore, but I enjoy having written. Uh, you want to strengthen your project management skills and you do want more flexibility, then you're very likely going to like grant writing. But for the people that spin in indecision, really the only way to know is to try. It's the only way to know. You can read about it. You can watch videos about it. But until you get in there and give it a go, you won't know for sure. But I also like to paint the worst case scenario, like worst case, you decide you hate grant writing. Let's just throw it out there, right? Let's get the fears on the table. So Let's look at what else you're still walking away from. You still have modern project management and computer skills. You're learning Asana, you're learning Calendly, Slack, Loom, all of these skills that are useful no matter what you choose to do. You're learning how to make money freelancing, whether you decide to be a day of wedding planner or like whatever, you can make money freelancing. You're learning the fundamentals of business. You're learning how to find job opportunities and you're getting more clarity on what you do want. Sometimes we have to try to something that to discover we don't want that to find our next best thing, right? So that's like the worst case scenario and nowhere in there is it like, wow, you wasted a bunch of time and money. Like that's not a part of your worst case scenario at all. 
So I think just one of the questions I also get to, I had this yesterday with two gals I talked to, was like, is it for me? So we typically have sort of like, everybody is very similar in terms of like how we operate and think and our, um, just who we kind of are, but there are also sort of more three distinct segments that I'll describe here that are pretty common for who joins the collective. So we, we get a lot of parents, usually moms, that need schedule flex flexibility and a way to keep moving their career forward while being able to also still have their kids at home. So here's an example, Shana did that. She like walks her kids to school, they get to the bus, uh, she picks them up at three, but she's like having a full work day and still moving her career forward versus having to drop out of the workforce. Uh, retirement gig is pop very common. So, you know, you still have a lot of give, you just don't want to keep doing your career. So Bob was a teacher, Kim was a, what is it called? Um, chiropractor. They ended up starting mission makers, retired, and they're now retiring in Tennessee and they have a full client load and they're sending back more of their referrals to unicorns in the program. So that's a really common, common one. Then the third segment, I'm going to call Grant Curious. So it's typically, uh, typically a younger person, they're out of college or it's their, they've done their first job and realized that wasn't all that they maybe want their life to look like, wanting some change. So an example would be Sarah. Her father actually took the, my original grant writing course and like drug Sarah into it when she was still in college and she has just blossomed in it. So she started freelancing and she landed a full-time job. So she's actually doing both. And she has just built this beautiful life and she has just radiated and grown and is such a confident woman that she was not when she started. So that's sort of the three segments. There's also people, I guess would add that like have their own nonprofit that they're trying to fund. But those not a huge, huge part of the segment. So what does it cost? So it's a 12 month commitment of $250 a month, then going month to month. So you can stay as long as you want or $3,000 a year. And if you're wondering like, why is it structured as a year? It's for this reason. You might've seen this for, like I know Peggy said, she just finished my book. So she would have seen this, the Dunning-Kruger effect. So almost all programs, like if you took a grant writing class at a college, that would be a semester long or any other program is like three to four months long. And that actually coincides with when most people are in the valley of despair. So when you start, you're super pumped, but you don't actually know what you're doing. And then you learn all this content. You start seeing how other people are navigating situations. And like, it's very common to plummet all of a sudden. And ironically, you earn your certificate when you feel kind of the lowest in terms of your confidence. And so that's where I'm like, gotcha, you know, safety net. Like now we've got this big net and we're like throwing you back up so that you can, all right, now let's be really building up our paid real experience so that you are getting confident and competent so that you can fully step into that grant writing unicorn. And the reality is the questions that you ask me today are different than the ones you ask at three months, but the ones you ask at 12 months that you ask two years from now, because your journey is progressing. Like I'm not just concerned with helping you land your job. I want you to land your job, thrive in your job, grow your job, and even do your next big thing, right? So that's why it's structured as a year commitment. Okay, that's actually all the questions I was gonna hit. So hopefully that was helpful. Okay, so what did I miss? And I can probably just stop screen sharing. And you're welcome to completely unmute. We're a small group. Um, wait, someone raised his hand. Warren, yeah, go for it. Hi, yeah, thanks for the, thanks for the great, um, webinar you just did here, Meredith. That was really helpful and informative. I also got the book and everything too, and I've been enjoying all the great influence in it. I am wondering, uh, the, like I said, I'm with a company now that just started. Um, they're a new startup company. They're just about to get their nonprofit status. I'm kind of like yeah. showing up there to learn and kind of get everything, the ball rolling and stuff. And I really do want to start taking the course the, from, fund, uh, from start to funded is kind of the main track I wanted to do. I was wondering if there's any way, like, because I, I want them to pay for it, right? <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, kind of, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. They should. Like, and definitely a good ROI. <laughs> exactly. And I was kind of hoping, um, or like, is there any way of like, of like involving start to funded within like the budget of an application or proposal? I, I know that that's kind of, um, I don't know if that's a gray area at all, but that's kind of one of the things I'm looking at. We might have some leads for like nimble private funders. I know that in your book, you say to pursue those kind of first. So we have some of those, but yeah, I, I wanted yeah. to 
Can I hear your thoughts? Yeah, on that? I mean, I have two ideas based on your situation. So, so, well, three. Okay, so one would be yes, you can definitely sometimes find grants that would fund a program like this, and it's called seeking out capacity building grants. So, you're especially as a new nonprofit, you're saying like, hey, we're building our internal capacity, and this is the program for us to do that. The catch right. is you're really holding yourself out for quite a long time to get underway. And a little bit of that chicken and egg thing of like, how do I get this funding when I don't actually know exactly what I'm doing? So the other thing you can do is like join monthly so that your cash like commitment is low. And then when, when that grant is secured or when the organization's willing to pay it, like we can change it and be like, okay, here's the rest of your year and just give you an invoice for that. So you still would have a way of, and you can still tell them the price of like a full year. And then it just extends your membership for three more months or whatever. Right. Right. So that's one way to handle that. Um, so that you aren't in this situation where you're like actually drawing out the whole process longer than you should, because if you just knew a few things, you wouldn't have made some silly mistakes. Right. Perfect. Yeah. Um, the other thing I want to talk to you about is fiscal sponsorship. So like a, cha and I, a challenge and we get a lot of you saw that in the bonus trainings, like working with new startup nonprofits, like there's a lot of nuance in that. And funders sometimes want to see that you've been around the block for three years, or you have a program budget that's 90 K at least. And so like strategically using fiscal sponsorship is very important. And it is a topic we talk about in almost every coaching call. So like, that's where, yeah, I get like, you're looking at start to fund it, but again, you might consider the collective because that, that's where bring that to the coaching call. Like we could do a teardown on that this afternoon and do some strategy on like how would how can you approach helping the organization get grant funding but maybe also find a very strategic partner that could get grant funding that could then route it to you while you're in these early years does that make right. sense yeah that, that was something i'm literally getting on a call with the owner of the company after this call and that's one of the things i wanted to talk about she we might have a fiscal sponsor to start us off with the idaho stem action center i believe but oh, um yeah we i mean that's you know, also stuff that I'm just trying to also cobble together and everything yeah. as well. So yeah. no, um, that's, that's great information. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Good questions, Warren. Cool. Okay. Hannah, you want to ask your question? You're totally welcome to. It's, um, are you, what's your passion? Like is, is arts your passion? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, a little frog in my throat. So I currently work for an organization that is a nonprofit. Um, I was the director of operations and I am moving into the director of development role to try and build our grant writing. So we, our funding has been like this huge roller coaster over the years. So we celebrated our 15 year anniversary, but we're still very small, still having a lot of trouble building capacity, keeping staff, that sort of thing. So my goal is to try and build our budget. Um, but at the same time, I am also kind of considering doing um, the freelance route and stuff as well, kind of in tandem with that. And so the arts, I mean, we are an arts organization. I come from a dance background um, and that is kind of my passion, but I also um, and am interested in grant writing and writing for other things. But I was just curious as far as how many, because it feels like from some of the research that I've done and a lot of examples that get thrown out tend to be like, well, we're raising money for a hospital or a kid's program or these things that see, you know, a food bank that seem to, you know, they have a little bit more sense of urgency, you know, per se, whereas the arts doesn't have that same sort of sense of urgency, but still has that need for funding. Um, so I was just kind of curious as far as the amount of people that um, are in the arts or kind of what your experience has been with that, just as far as the community, you know, if that's going to be something that would be discussed. Okay, yeah, so great question. Art is an extremely popular and common topic that members are helping get funded. So hundred um, percent like we have a lot of people that care about like cultural and arts programming even historic preservation like um, just definitely funding our organizations is extremely pop, pop common and what your situation is is, is that you are going to be splitting yeah sure the grant writing portion but there's also probably like some actual fundamental program development and like sustainability questions that have to get worked out and so like recognize your role is only, it's actually like the grant writing will become the easy part. <laughs> and it's the figuring out like, how do we really lock down? Like, what is our business model? And the thing is you can still very much create urgency around art, especially because art is usually a, is often a reflection of the modern times and modern issues that we're struggling through as, as a culture. And so you can often use that as like the time is now for like, I mean, I helped get a project just locally grant funded where there was a, a, a referendum on the, like to be passed locally. 
And we gathered all these like group of artists in this kind of creative neighborhood, literally just like met in someone's house, brainstormed a bunch of ideas, came up with an, a couple like cheap ideas where we like punched uh, Christmas lights like through kind of a big sign and like held them over the freeways, bridges. We have all these pedestrian bridges. And like, it was a way to give a positive message to people while they're commuting. And we were able to get some grant funding for that. And it was like, this is urgent because we have a ballot that's literally has a, do- a voting date. So you can create more, like, that's the thing that if you want to bring like a narrative and have a talk through like, and how can I create more urgency here? We can do that. Um, there's definitely a lot of interest in arts. Yeah, they think the biggest thing is like, we have to start looking at the business model. Like what are the right activities to be doing? And maybe some things have to get cut so other things can get more focus, right? And so those might be the things that you are having, doing the critical thinking on and making recommendations on that are beyond. And that's common in a funding strategy. It's like, we could go after these grants, but these are the things that have to be dealt with first. Right. Does that answer your question? Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And you and Erica need to nerd out because she's also a dancer. (laughs) She's uh, in purple, even though it looks like she's my name. Um, Oh, this is exciting. Okay. Um, Stanley Rose has raised his hand. Let's talk. And then yeah, Clarissa, let's, let's hit yours next. So Stanley, you're totally welcome to unmute. Hello. Uh, Hello to you. Thank you uh, very much for the work. You you have been so impactful. In fact, uh, one of the great resources that I like from your you know enterprise is the seven steps to to yeah. grant writing. I mean, it has been so it's so nice. So my question is very simple. If 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 you yeah. if uh, maybe you and anybody if we can think through, what would you say is the standard for you know a full time grant writer? writing for a non-profit organization in the United States or whatever in Canada. What would you say is the standard rather recommendable uh, number of submissions, rather grant submission per month that you would say this is recommended? What would you recommend as the number of grants to be submitted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's yeah. a good one. Per month. Erica, write yeah, this per down. Month. I got to make a YouTube you, I got to make a YouTube video about this. This is so good. This is the question I get. Okay. Can't forget it. Um, okay. So often when an organization is thinking about hiring you, that will be how they try to measure success, number of grants completed. But it is a vanity metric because you can crank out a lot of crappy proposals. Who cares? What matters are the ones you win. And if it means that you pursue four grants instead of 40 grants, but you win the four and that that one of them was a really big, tough federal grant that brought in a couple hundred thousand dollars, that is worth more than five grants a month, right? So that's why the funding strategy and how I teach that is like very particular because it is not about quantity. We took, um, there's a gal, Jane Chambers and her husband are volunteers at a fire department in rural Washington. She wrote something absurd. Like, I wish I had the stats in front of me. It was like 55 grants, one, one of them worth 5,000. Got her to like, stop doing that, chasing grants haphazardly. And she's wrote 20 grants in the subsequent year. And one was like 1.5 million. I'd have to go look at the exact data to give you numbers, but like a complete turnaround by doing way less but working on the right grant proposals. So when you're in a situation where you're trying to uh, appeal to an American organization or a Canadian organization to land a job opportunity, how you differentiate yourself is talking about the funding strategy because it it is like they salivate over it because you're actually speaking to the pain points they have, which is not not getting grants out the door. It's not knowing which ones to go after, not having a strategy for it, right? And so when you can say, I can get you through that portion, like that is where you deliver your value and strongly differentiate yourself um, between you and other people. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. It makes sense. Maybe the last one would be now objectively, you say that you can confirm that you debunk the school of thought that holds the view that the more the grants that go out to out out of the door the more the chances of one or two or three or four getting successful 
that the yes. many, you know, increase the chance that you have to do many for you to increase the chance of out of them, a few being successful. Do you think yeah, it is? I mean, uh, it's a good point because it sounds like I'm giving conflicting messaging in the sense that I tell you do like a ton of informational interviews. The more you do, the more opportunities you create. This is not that same relationship okay. because grants are a lot of work. And also this is about not burning you out. It's about your health and wellness too. And it's about like doing the right grants. And a lot of times it's not the grant itself that is the most important activity. It is funder relationship building. And it's, it's other, it's getting a project ready to be funding ready, right? Like there's all of these other activities that segue into actually a grant being successful or not that has nothing to do with throwing spaghetti at the wall. So okay. yeah, lots of strategy in that, but I do wanna make sure I have a chance to get to, Clarissa didn't quite have a question, but I can appreciate the dilemma. Um, Clarissa, do you wanna unmute? You're welcome to. But good I, question, Stanley. I appreciate bringing those up. Okay. I'm gonna make some YouTube videos on those. So if you have more, you're welcome to put them, like put them in the chat box, and we'll be sure to get that. Um, Clarissa. Yeah. Um. Really, really glad to be here. Um, I have been on the fence for a while with um, joining the collective because yes, I'm running for a political office. I'm a first time. Thank you for doing that. Thanks. I'm a first time politician. Um, I care a lot about my community and how it's been underserved for a long time. Yeah. But it all goes back to grant writing and my desire to bring more funding to my neighborhood. And then I realized that, you know, we need the political backing as well. Um, mm -hmm. But just knowing, yeah, my, my election is November 8th. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. just, you know, and being a first time mother, I'm a stay at home mom. So just trying to figure out a way to like, should I wait till after my election to, I mean, you can't answer these questions for me. No, but... it's okay. They're good. It's a good dilemma. I mean, you're reminding me of one of my best friends. Her name's Jenny. Same thing. She has a 10 month old. She's running for office for the first time. And she's running a really busy consulting business. Like super, super get the situation. I just spent the weekend with her kind of did a little women's retreat. So understand the dilemma. And when she painted me her calendar of like all the places you're going and all that you're learning, it's a lot. So I guess like the thing to think about is what I have really observed because Alaska is a small state is that understanding grant funding is a very powerful coupling with pol um, politics because the two have a very interesting relationship. And so you understanding how money flows is going to make you infinitely more effective in office if like when you win, right? Um, even if you decide, you don't decide that you're going to be the ultimate, um, cr the one cranking out narrative proposals, et cetera. Like you will probably have then the opportunity to marry even maybe a, like a staffer can help you, but you've been able to be strategic and figuring out what the grants would be that you would recommend pursuing that help bring it back to your district. So the thing though, that is, it would just be like, release the pressure to figuring out how to freelance it, release the pressure to try to do making money on it, release that pressure. But if you start learning, like if you can just binge content and do a funding strategy for your community that you care about, and that's what you accomplish, like that's going to even give you new stuff to talk about on, on the campaign trail, right? But just don't put all this pressure on yourself to like make any money. Don't put, you know, put that pressure on yourself, like do it to learn the knowledge and get it like soaking in, but not to like do perfect. Like, don't worry about the certificate. You can put that off till later. You know, just like how I would approach it if I were in your situation would be like binge, binge watching or listening. Like you have to be taking a walk between people's houses as you're door knocking. So like, whatever, just have them in your ears, whatever you need to do. Um, so like you're binging and understanding how it works. And if you had time to do a funding strategy, it will be an amazing, it'll be, it would be amazing for you. Um, to understand also like how do I bring this money back to here so you also know what you're, how to be strategic and like if this grant requires you know a, like basically a lot of times if you're trying to get match funding and you know that that could come from the state or whatever what are you what, is that the position you're running for are you running for state state policy no, for for alder woman so it's oh, okay. city council city council okay well no, that's all, all the better because that's often like that really does influence how grant funding is distributed into um, different parts of the city, right? Um, so yeah, I could I could definitely nerd out on this for a lot, a lot with you. I think my biggest thing would just be, don't try to be perfect about it. It's never a good time, but if you can even just kind of like soak up some of that content, more will get into your brain than you realize. And it'll, it'll make you dangerous, like in a good way. 
Thank you so much. That's incredibly yeah. helpful. Yeah, for sure. Um, actually, and so I think what I'm going to do, and it's funny how I'm loving how we have all of these performers, like Erica, have you just like found all your people and like brought them in? Or what? Yeah, I'm nerding out so hard. Like, do you, I want to DM all of you, be like, so like what cruise ship were you on? Like, tell me everything about you. <laughs> so good. So good. Okay. Well, so I'm going to create um, a discount code so we can for everyone that came, thank you for taking your time to come. I need a word so I can go create one. Um, someone give me a word that's short and easy to spell and it's not a unicorn. <laughs> Shazam. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Shazam. All right, I'll make it for the collective and for start to funded. Um, it'll be, it will, expire on Saturday the 13th. Okay, Shazam. That's a good one. All right, give me a second while I create these. And if you had any other questions, I can definitely unmute yourself to ask them because I can't look at my chat box and do this at the same time. Not bad. Okay, almost got it. Thanks everybody for being patient with me doing this. Can't say we've ever done a group call before, so this was fun. Okay, I so for, this, oh, yeah, sorry. go ahead. I would just say I threw it in the <clears throat> in the chat, um, but I will um, throw my email in there as well. Um, if anybody wants to just exchange as far as like networking with the people that that came here today, oh, I will drop mine in there. Yeah, that's awesome. Go for it. I'm about do that real quick, and then I'm about to drop in these discount codes. So the collective for not two hundred fifty dollars a month but whatever, whatever 10% off is, that's that link with Shazam. So whatever 10% off is on that. Um, and then start to funded. Where are you? Hopefully I got this. Okay, that's here. Cool, glad you all are connecting. This is what actually happens in the collective too. One makes really good connections. Oh, that's the wrong thing. That's like a really old course. Don't never mind. Ignore that last one. I did the wrong thing. This is what I get for trying to be on the fly. Let's see. Maybe I should have done this before, but I didn't know I was going to. Well, I guess I can't figure out which one is the grant writer from start to funded. Might have to, there it is. Okay. Okay. Boom, there it is. Try that. Sweet, and if we can send out, yeah, thanks for putting your emails in, then we could actually send you out an email since we didn't know, we didn't require pre-registration, so. Sweet. Well, any other questions before we go our merry way on a lovely Tuesday? I have a question really quick. Yeah, go for it, Spencer. Um, yeah, so firstly, thank you for doing this. Um, I, I really enjoy having a space for grant writing where it's like, you know, not super cold and robotic like other organizations. Yeah, thank you. It's like everything we're not. <laughs> yeah, you guys are like the opposite of them. And I was thinking about getting certified through one of them. And I'm just like, I'm okay. I don't really want to do them. Anyway, um, so my question is, uh, when it comes to the informational interviews, and like when you join the collective or when you do the start to fund a thing, do you have a, like a template that you guys offer where it's like, hey, like here's some ideas of how to conduct those interviews. Like, is that something you guys offer? Oh, yeah. I go into like molecular detail, <laughs> so much so that we actually did a, um, in January, we did an informational interview challenge. So everyone would kick off their year well, and that's all of what's in that bonus training section. 
So there's a lot more detail even in there, but just within the course, like it's a, I call it the organic networking framework, five steps. And it is like, here's how you find the organizations. Here's how you build that list, the types of people to talk to, um, the email to send, exact copy, um, the like how to track those conversations, how to conduct the interview. Here are the sample questions. Here's like, it is every single detail. There is like nothing left to chance aside from the fact that you just have to do the work. But like, it is very, very, very step-by-step -step, more so than any other piece I'd say in the whole program. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah it's a, uh, you call it the no excuses template, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's what I should call it. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. You get some people that are a little like they feel a little nervous to do it. I mean, look at us, like we're a stranger having a call right now. Like it's no different, right? Um, but it's it allows you to like you can also start with even like, can I just have some informational interviews with a couple other people that are in the collective? So you can just have a couple conversations with people and even just do a mock one together, work out some of those kinks and start with someone you already know. So you already have like a comfortable, warm conversation, right? Like that works as well. So yeah, it's a good question. It's very common if you're feeling a little woozy around that, but honestly, it works. It works wonders and it works quicker than you would think. So sweet. Okay. Well, hopefully everyone threw in their email. If you haven't yet, be sure to do that so we can make sure we can actually <laughs> follow up with you since <laughs> this was just a little pop-up style. Um, but really appreciate everyone taking the time to connect. feels like a coaching call, <laughs> which we have one of those later. I actually would have to get going on and go prepare for <laughs> um, yeah, this was, this was awesome. I really appreciate everyone taking the time today to connect. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Catherine. Appreciate it. Thanks so <laughs> cool. much. All great. right. See everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye. See you, Jean or Jeannie. Hi. Yes. How are you? Did I say your name wrong? Yeah. I don't know if I said your name wrong. Is it, is it? It's Jeannie. Your name? Jeannie. Okay, Jeannie. cool. So, all right. Yes. Nice. Thank you. Thanks, Jeannie. Bye. Thank you. Bye. I'm doing Bye. good. See you later, Bye, Carissa. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> cool. All right. I'll see you later.